discover China. Sixteen hundred years ago, a fisherman was walking along a stream. He became lost in the midst of a magical peach blossom forest. At the end of the path, he reached a narrow cave. Past the cave opening was a hidden village. The villagers explained to the puzzled fisherman that they had lived in seclusion for generations, escaping from the turmoil of the world. They knew nothing about the outside world or even what dynasty they were in. They lived a happy and carefree life. This dreamy tale was written by famed Chinese poet Tao Yuanming in 421. It was called "The Records of the Land of Peach Blossoms." The land of peach blossoms soon inspired many Chinese. Tao's story drew countless people who believed in his fantastic tale for generations to come. Like the Western ideals of Shangri-La. The land of peach blossoms was a magical place for the Chinese. If such a place did exist, it would have broad plains, beautiful houses, and fertile fields, rippling lakes, lush trees, and bamboo forests. It would have serene alleys crossing one another, a rooster's crow and a dog's bark. Here, that such a beautiful place could be found in China's southern parts. South of the Yangtze River is the Wuling Spring. It is similar to the spring mentioned in Tao's tale. Is it possible that the story took place at the Wuling Spring? <coughs> Wuling Spring is home to more than 3,000 stone pillars, some as high as 800 meters. Between the pillars are 800 valleys, shrouded with shifting clouds and mysterious caves. It has been called nature's labyrinth. It was conceivable the fisherman in Tao's story lost his way in this natural maze. The unique rock formations are only one reason why Wuling Spring was considered by many to be the land of peach blossoms. The folklore of the local ethnic groups offers other explanations. Many ethnic groups have been living here for ages. According to local customs, people who share the same lineage and surname often live in the same village. For the sake of basic communication, surnames were used to distinguish between different villages. Since ancient times, these people have revered the peach trees. They are warm and hospitable, inviting guests to their houses and treating them with their finest foods.
different ethnic groups have been living here, and their centuries-old ways of life has gone largely uninterrupted by the modern world. In his story, Tao Yuan Ming wrote, Men and women were dressed in vibrant clothes. All of them, old and young, appeared happy. They were surprised to see the fishermen, then invited him to visit their homes, prepared food, and served him wine. The people living in Wuling Spring today epitomize Tao Yuan Ming's descriptions. <laughs> Because of their land's unique terrain, local villagers plant their rice on mountains miles away. The fields atop the mountains are arranged like a delicate tapestry. This seven hectare field appears to be suspended in midair. Surrounded by sheer cliffs and steep valleys, these unique sky fields are a unique sight. The villagers' elders still maintain their ancient ways and traditions. Their customs, together with the magnificent mountain peaks, adds to Wuling Springs luster. It was not until the 1980s that the Wuling Spring area was even discovered by outsiders. It quickly became known as one of China's most unique places. It appears that the Wuling Spring is indeed the land of peach blossoms. However, dating back to 200 BC, Wuling served as a back door to the kingdom of Shu. Its unique location and strategic significance brought numerous wars to the region. differs entirely from what Tao Yuan Ming described when he wrote, their ancestors had come to this isolated haven, bringing their families to escape the turmoil and war. Records of the Land of Peach Blossoms was written in 421, 16 years after Tao Yuan Ming resigned from his government post. Wuling Spring was named more than 300 years later. It seems Wuling Spring was not the land of peach blossoms. Yet another important clue is now rising, Tao Yuan Ming's place of residence. Situated 600 kilometers away from Wuling Spring is Lu Mountain, where the poet lives since his resignation. Based on local folklore, the Kangwang Valley in Lu Mountain is the epitome of the land of peach blossoms. During the 1930s, a British missionary, Edward Selby Little, became enamored with Lou Mountain's natural beauty. He built hundreds of villas atop the mountain. A genuine city in the clouds, this mountain community attracted many Westerners who came to China. Once remarked that Lu 
mountain was a unique place where people could reflect on their lives. same reasons. In those days, an official government post was a scholar's life dream. Tao Yuang Ming's appointment, however, came during an unstable period. Fierce class struggles between officials were widespread, and humble and honest officials such as Tao couldn't accomplish their goal of becoming civil servants. decided to resign from his post to lead a simpler, more peaceful life. He bought a farm where he and his wife lived. In his later years, he enjoyed the tranquil and pure air of Blue Mountain. He would frequently visit the Dongling Temple at the foot of the mountain, discussing philosophy with the monks. Going to the temple, he had to pass through the Kangwon Valley. According to historical accounts, when the first emperor was attacking the south, people fled from their hometowns. the Lu Mountains deep valleys, a torrential downpour began. The rain and the deep and dark valleys discouraged the soldiers from chasing them. The refugees found a hiding place. They settled there, later deserting their original surnames, opting instead to be known by the surname Kung. The valley was soon renamed to suit its inhabitants. At the end of the valley is Banshan Kung village. Various temples are spread around the village. Isolated, the villagers had very little interaction with the outside world. This valley was also accurately depicted in Tao Yuan Ming's Land of Peach Blossoms. days, Lu Mountain and its surrounding areas, such as the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River, was densely populated. It neighbored Nanjing, then China's political center. Contrary to Tao's story, it was impossible for the residents of Kangwon Valley to be oblivious about the outside world. If places neighboring cities couldn't possibly be Tao Yuan Ming's paradise, could a remote place be the inspiration for his story? Perhaps Tao Yuan Ming merely heard about such a place, inspiring him to write his classic tale.
rivers run parallel to each other. The Three Rivers region has been regarded by many researchers as the real-life Shangri-La. It seemed to be more like the carefree world described by Taoyuan Ming. In 1933, James Hilton's legendary novel Lost Horizon introduced the concept of Shangri-La to the world. In the novel, four Westerners were kidnapped by a mysterious Asian hijacker on a plane. After the plane crashed, the survivors found themselves in a magical place. In Shangri-La, they were well treated. Time seemed to lose its meaning. The people living in the magical valley lived unusually long lives. The Westerners were given an audience with the Lama Series High Lama. For different reasons, each Westerner chose to stay in the valley. Happy, free, and far from grief, people there enjoyed the sunshine, the mountains, and nature's beauty. The valley's natural gold deposits meant nothing to them. They practiced moderation. The valley was teeming with people from many nationalities. Although each had different faiths and customs, they loved each other and lived together in harmony. Interestingly, the novel ends on a similar note to Tao Yuan Ming's Land of Peach Blossoms. In Tao's tale, the fisherman wished to revisit the Land of Peach Blossoms, yet he couldn't find his way back to the forest. In Hilton's Lost Horizon, the four Westerners also lose their way and are unable to find the valley again. Lost Horizon to the west was what Land of Peach Blossom was to the east. They both depicted idealistic, utopian concepts. Shangri-La soon became a Western concept, meaning heaven on earth. The three rivers, the Jingsha, Lansung, and New River all originate from the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau. They run parallel, yet never converge. make the 
land of the three rivers in isolated even. With freedom, tolerance, and equality, the Three Rivers region is a land where many ethnic groups, languages, and religions merge into one. Man and nature living in harmony was the ideal Taliwan Ming pursued. For many, the old dream of forgetting one's troubles and pursuing peace and happiness remains unrealized. Sadly, many people do not realize they already have such happiness. Throughout the ages, man has always sought the lands of peach blossoms and Shangri-Las. The land of peach blossoms was Taoyuan Ming's spiritual respite, living forever in his words. identity, or even nationality. No matter where they come from, no matter what they believe in, everyone has their own land of peach blossoms or Shangri-La. is heaven on earth. 